which yeah. make you uh, then irritated and, and it actually hurts. But by rubbing them thoroughly, uh, you break the filaments and therefore you're less likely to get stung. But also I'm a gardener, so my skin is a bit thicker on my hands. Not mine though, I'm scary. <laughs> scary. <laughs> I'm, scared. Scared. <laughs> I'm definitely I'm scared. But again, um, you can find these in urban and rural areas, uh, as well as long as well as the sticky uh, sticky willy or the cleavers. Um, and uh, garlic is probably less likely to find in urban areas, but you may well do in, in big sort of big parks, have usually ever, under trees. Have you ever eaten nettles? I've eaten nettles actually before, and uh, you can use them um, basically like spinach. You can use all of this. Basically, cleavers you can use as a, a, a spinach alternative, as you would. You can blanch and boil, put in with your food, your your every you know yeah. your, your stews and your soups. Same with nettles. You can make um, little cakes out of nettles, I think. A nettle and I saw really? nettle and chocolate cake the other nettle day. Nettle ice cream. Nettle up, well, nettle. <laughs> nettle soup. Um, but always, always be careful when you pick them. Only cut the top off and use gloves because they really do sting. And some people do have, I think, allergic reactions to them. Same as anything when you're foraging. Just be careful. Yeah. And we have here, this isn't forage, but this is actually taken from our little back garden, which is a uh, cress. And we've uh, we've just grown this from seed in a little pot in the back garden. And we go out, it's got a really peppery taste. We just chop a little bit off, which we're going to garnish with some chives, which are somewhere. The chives have gone missing, but we've also got that from our back garden. Here's a chive. So for those who just joined, this is Toby and that's Dora and Mirabelle and Extinction Rebel and we are we did a big foraging tour today. Yeah, yeah, if you can do a bit. And we've got all these things from the side of the street, the side of the road. So we've got nettles, which I'm really scared of, to be <laughs> honest. I'm not very confident, but you're going to make, is it blanched? We're going to blanch nettles, so just nettles. slightly boil them. And by boiling them, by heating them up, you actually um, get rid of the, the steam, so you don't have to worry about it when you eat. And we got wild garlic. Which it smells amazing, by the way. What what was this? Cleaver, cleaver. Cleaver. I never knew this before, but apparently it's supposed to be uh, a very simple and uh, basic UK-based weed. Is yeah, it, it is a weed, and you can again use this like uh, the nettles and cleavers. You can use as spinach, and the net or the cleavers apparently tastes a bit like asparagus. Really? So nettles are also extremely highly nutritious. All of this have they have a, a high amount of vitamins, nutrients in them. Nettles, especially, they have the magnesium, they have potassium, I believe, vitamin A, lots of different vitamin Ds, vitamin C as well, and iron. So this nice. is really, really good for us. Garlic, wild garlic, has the same properties as um, the garlic that we buy from supermarkets. So it's good for the blood. Um, I can't remember what else it's good for, vitamins and so forth, but it's actually <laughs> wild garlic is better. Right, all right. Um, by the way, guys, if you have any questions or comments, advices, tips for us or just you want to share how you feel today then feel free to add your comments into the comment section wherever you are on twitter facebook youtube wherever, everywhere yeah everywhere anywhere you watch us and we'll answer anything that we can and we'll look at them afterwards if we haven't uh, we, if we don't manage yeah and also we are also experimenting right now sure. so everything we got we never tried before so Such quite you exciting. can see yeah <laughs> you can see and decide for yourself if you want to do the same thing or not because you're going to experiment on ourselves first. So yeah, again, just if you have joined us, we're, we're cooking for climate. Mm. There's, um, and if, you, if you're, because we're all stuck in a situation at the moment, isolation, social distancing, and we all know what the situation is with the virus and so on and so forth. There's an amazing um, site and uh, um, movement, I guess, called uh, Alone Together. Is it a Oh, movement? yes. Um, I would say it's more like an initiative. And this is wonderful. So if you uh, if you go, uh, if you type in alone together, you'll see so many so many wonderful things. Lots of initiatives. What you can do as a family, as individuals at home. Yeah. And you can download a, a booklet, which uh, which is really. Oh really yeah, useful. there's a there's a whole calendar available where you can look up courses you can take, um, different uh, sources of self help or meditation or yoga, but also practical advice. is really really cool. Really cool. So well, thank you. Any messages? Please please put any messages up and. And any advice with regard to foraging? One of the things that we must remember when we forage is to only take what we need. And also, mm -hmm. if you're in an area where there's lots of nettles or lots of cleavers or lots of whatever you're foraging, be it berries in the autumn, just take a little bit from one area and then move down and take a little, another bit. Because these, these, uh, this food, this, uh, these plants are part of the natural system and part of the cycle we all have to respect, which is 
another thing that we're all trying to do. And one of the reasons that we're in the situation, be it climate, be it uh, the virus, be it whatever, is that we've had a lack of respect of, of nature and the system. So just by foraging, we're trying to bring that respect, bring that knowledge back into our homes and in our hearts. Oh, it's such a lovely message. So Leo said yesterday they made nettle, how do you pronounce that? Tagliatelle. What is it? That's a kind of type of pasta. Ah, oh, so it's amazing. going to be very similar to our gnocchi. Oh uh, yeah, we haven't told them we're making gnocchi. Oh. Okay, so there is a surprise uh, because we're making this amazing white garlic pesto and we were thinking what we could use it with and I found an amazing recipe online, which is a, a gnocchi recipe. We're not going to go through that today, but if you guys are interested, so let us know if you are, we can definitely show it next time. Um, and this is what it looks like now. Look ooh. at that. Yeah, it's basically sweet potato, semolina, a bit of flour, water. It's all vegan, all plant-based, all cruelty-free, all, all really, tasty, really tasty, we hope. Hopefully. Well, yeah. we haven't tried it. This is the first, first time. time. Uh, another comment from Christopher. Thank you for getting the human race ready for the human revolution. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And on that note, um, there is an amazing campaign starting next week. It's called... No Going Back. No Going Back. No Going Back. Which means... What does it mean? It basically means that uh, before this situation, before this weird place that we're all in worldwide, um, it was you know the, the world was a bit strange. You know, it was it was really destructive and 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 not and we're you know we're just taking and taking and taking, and the world seems to be collapsing for, because we're doing this. But this uh, virus, what has it done? It's just slowed everything down. It's shut everything down, and yeah. it's proven to us that we can we can slow down. And that we don't need everything that we're told we need. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this economical concept called the donut economy. It explains this concept, concept really beautifully in a visual way that you can stay within the means of the, the, the capacity of the earth and not overshoot, but you can also meet your needs and also yeah. have a thriving life. And I think that's what many of us are finding right now. I don't want to also minimize the, the effect of this virus because it, Let's be honest, we are super privileged here right now. Extremely privileged. And we don't face a lot of the consequences of the virus. Yeah. But I think also for the benefit of those people, we owe that transition because it's not the, the less privileged people's fault that we ended up in this situation or yeah. that we have an economy that is very destructive to all of us. It really depends on the, the top whatever percent we call. Anyway, not pointing fingers on anyone. We should start cooking, isn't it? But also basically, to just, so no going back is the idea that we don't go back to that. We have an opportunity now to change the system, don't we? And to change the world to a more peaceful world. And just before we can quickly do this, because this we're going to have to get on cooking soon, uh, we were watching a, 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 um, an XR video live with some econo economists, uh, which was absolutely wonderful. Mm. Roger Hallam and um, yeah, Bradbrook. Gail Bradbrook and three other economists. Economists. You guys know who, who these guys are. So Roger and Gail are the two co-founders of Extinction Rebellion. And they had this amazing panel yeah, yeah. Uh, a recorded Zoom call. You can actually find it on Extinction Rebellion in UK. If you go to the videos and scroll back a bit, um, it's there. Yeah, yeah, it's there. It's really Watch. well worth watching. It's really interesting mm -hmm. what these economists say. And one of them was saying that there was a famous economist, I'm not very good with names, so I can't remember who it was, said that to change the economic system now would be like changing an aeroplane to a helicopter in mid flight. But right now, the helicopter's landed, uh, the aeroplane has landed. So it's so much easier to change the system and to change it into yeah. a, a more compassionate and more equal system. Yeah, and part of this, I mean, we could go on for a rest of looking, but part of that is also transitioning to a plant-based food system, which oh, Animal Rebellion is all about. So this T-shirt, it was printed in the vegan camp out last, last year, June, August, 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 oh, August. August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, Animal Rebellion was formed last year around June, June time. And as you guys can see, we've got all the flag up there. And the teacher. And the teacher. Well, Dora is one of the co-founders. Well, well, and the, it has been block she, 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 printed. She. It has been block printed over there. So we're trying to also minimize the impact of our cook production. But anyway, let's get started with the cooking now. So, okay, what we're going to do? So we are starting with the white garlic pesto. And it's super simple. It, ha it has about three main ingredients. Four. We're going to put it in this or the uh, other one? Um, I've got the blender. I need the big blender, don't I? Two. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Okay. Shall we just list the ingredients? Yeah. So wild garlic. Wild garlic. Cleavers, which is a sticky willy or goose grass. Um, 
some walnuts, which are also UK based. Mm -hmm. um, these have been kept I, in their shell. I literally just cracked them half an hour ago, which is so amazing. I don't crack for the live video. And again, walnuts have so many uh, so many benefits. They're really good for the brain, uh, which is they ought to actually look like brains. And they're rich in omega three. So if you're on a plant based diet, or I don't want to say diet, it sounds so restrictive, but if you eat plant based, it's super important to get a lot of omegas, and the walnut is an amazing source. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the normal uh, recipe uh, asks for a nutritional yeast, but we're trying to do local and foraged food. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be adding that ourselves, um, but also a little bit of oil. Which is an uh, olive oil. Yeah, olive oil. So let's get started. Let's get started. So if you just joined us, hello YouTube, hello Twitter. And Facebook. Hoo -hoo. So welcome, welcome all. We're here with cl Cooking Climate. We're cooking the climate. We are cooking the climate. <laughs> So, so we're putting a handful of... Uh, this is foraged wild garlic we got today. Uh, we got up early in the morning. But we got up, <laughs> and we got some forage stuff. And uh, the meal, meal we make today is going to be a wild garlic and cleaver uh, pesto um, with homemade gnocchi. gnocchi on the side. And then we are also going to experiment with nettles, which I'm not excited about <laughs> because I'm scared. Um, and we also have some press that we grew in our little garden. And some chives as well, but they're just basically for garnishing. So we just put the uh, the garlic in the mixer and we get about two uh, cupfuls of this. Oh, that is quite a lot. But I'm just gonna rip them off like this. We're just doing this by ear, by eye. And by the way, if you don't have a blender or you don't want to use electricity, that's fair enough. Um, and you can probably just use um, something like, yeah, something like this. And oh, yeah, just and pestle. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna now we've so we've got the cleaver and the wild garlic leaves in here. I'm gonna put the have you lost your phone? I have lost my phone. I'm gonna put the walnuts in now. So about a third of a cup of walnuts. Not my phone. And then again a little bit of olive oil. Oh, it's a very, very good comment from YouTube. Do nettles not sting you? Yeah, uh, yeah. If you miss that, that is very good. Fair comment. So they do sting. We all know that nettles sting. The sting nettles do. There are different types of nettles. Some don't, but the sting nettles do. So when you do forage them, I used these really useful things: gardening gloves. So please do use gardening gloves when you forage them. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you do forage them, um, just cut the tops off. I've cut them a bit longer because um, just so I can show you at all. But um, I'll be using just the tops and I'm going to cut that bit off now. So what I'm able to do, the reason I'm able to hold this now is because I wash them quite thoroughly, which you should do with all the greens. Um, and the little filaments, which when you see a, a little leaf, I don't know if you can see this, these have been washed, so the filaments aren't there. But it's the little filaments that dig into your skin. Oh, you can put it in oh yeah. They're digging <laughs> to your skin. So if you actually um, you just use gloves always. Um, and then when you cook them, it, uh, it stops them from stinging. So don't worry about it at all. There are some crazy people out there. There's this nettle eating, raw nettle eating competition. I think it's in the UK and America. Crazy. And they just eat them raw. I would not recommend that to anyone. So um, I just put the, the nettles, not the nettles, the wild garlic. The cleaver. the cleaver and the walnuts and some oil into this food processor and it's going to process the other one, work, hmm? the other one won't work no i think this is better okay. yeah so you've got the top of it so welcome welcome this is our home my name's toby this is dora <laughs> how's it going and we're just here with extinction rebellion cooking for climate we were mentioning that it's a bit of a strange situation, as we all know. We're all locked down, um, and I, you know, there's a social distancing and so forth. And we were just recommending that there's an amazing campaign called Alone Together that Extinction Rebellion have, uh, have launched, basically. So find that, please. And there's a lot of so many things that we can do when we're at home. So we're going to make some noise. It's So there was, there was just, I don't know who commented that, but there's a comment from Caroline, I think, I believe. Are we a couple? 
we are a couple. We are since <laughs> since last year, since the rebellion, apparently. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> met the weekend before the rebellion at an animal rights uh, anti trophy hunting march in Summer Birmingham. Right, yeah. With the amazing Birmingham Animal Rights, big up the animal rights yep, in Birmingham. Big shout out. Big shout out to all the Midlands. They're amazing. They're so so good. And then uh, we met. Dora went down. Did basically the whole of the uh, rebellion. I went down for a couple of days. And then it just been awesome. <laughs> like <laughs> like wild garlic. Like wild garlic. <laughs> so we are, and we're very lucky. We're. I mean, it's amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um. So I'm struggling with these blending parts to blend up the wild garlic, but I think I really need some water. Well, we're gonna put. We're gonna get the big guns out. So this is all an experiment for us as well because we never foraged before. At least I haven't had any. No, I have. Well, and not really. I've had nettles before, and with the nettles, the cleavers, the, the goose grass, you can treat them like you would spinach, um, and just add them to stews and, and soups. And someone put earlier on that they had they made uh, a nettle tagliatelle. And the great thing about foraging is it's got such. There's no real, uh, you know, uh, carbon footprints apart from us going to get them. They're there. They're out there for everyone to. to we're going to try we're going to try everything but oh, it looks it? really really good by the way okay nice so we're we've um with wild garlic uh, cleavers um some walnuts and some oil and a lot of people put nutritional yeast flakes which is uh, and nutritional yeast flakes are a replacement for cheese sometimes um, I don't know how they made, but they look like fish food, which is a bit strange. But they're high in B12 if you get the ones fortified with B12 as well. So, have you done that? Is that ready? Um, it's almost ready. I need to do some other blending. How's it going? Um, getting there. Do you, want to put, you can put some more oil in if you feel like you need some more oil. So for those of you who just joined, um, welcome to our home. This is Toby and Dora from Extinct Rebellion and Rebellion, and we are cooking for climate today, which is a series of videos. So it's not the only video, but uh, you can look up the whole series of previous videos and upcoming videos. And um, we're trying to look at different food options uh, that can help people have a low carbon footprint, locally sourced, hopefully organic, cheap, yeah. accessible food option. And the one we're exploring today is foraged food. So we picked stuff from um, the street, basically, or from nearby forests. Not street. <laughs> well, well it was outside. It was outside. So it's about nettles you can pick from the street. Yeah, well, that's very true. Um, and we're lucky we live in the countryside. But you can you can forage in cities, you can forage in towns, you can forage in urban areas. It's, it's amazing. There's so much food out there. Do you want to And uh, we were talking about earlier on about a, a campaign that Extinction Rebellion are uh, launching next week, I believe, called No Going Back. And it is No Going Back, isn't it? Yeah. And I think we all think this is really important. I, I believe that we're all changing our views of how how life can be. Because, you know, we, we're so used to all these comforts and all these, these accessible things. You know, we can just press a button and everything comes to you. Press a button, and you can go out and get these things. But now we've realised that the, the the whole world is actually quite fragile because I think human activity has made it quite fragile. So we we're we're trying to find out different ways of creating a, a more sustainable, a more compassionate, a more peaceful world. And we're actually working this out by ourselves. You know, people, a lot of people are growing food, they're foraging. They're you know cooking from scratch, which is absolutely wonderful. It's really really lovely to hear, and it's just all that basic going back to basics, really simple, and really wonderful. So we don't. I mean, I definitely don't want to go back to the way it was, because the way it was has is quite damaging. I would say. Okay. Are we finished? So are we finished with this? No, no. So it's partially finished. I think. I think it needs a little bit more, but I'm just going to get some more water. Okay, yeah, maybe a little bit. 
Shall we get the uh, knock in? Okay, Dora earlier on made some knock in. <laughs> so basically, earlier on, I made some gnocchi, which is made out of uh, squash and a little bit of flour Sorry. and some semolina, which is apparently healthier than flour. Um, and made these gnocchis. I'm going to put the recipe into the comments after we finish the video. But today we're going to go through this recipe because we are focusing on the plant food, which is our pesto made of white garlic and cleavers. <laughs> I can never remember. And walnuts and a little bit of olive oil. So that's going to be the pesto that we put on these amazing nesses. And on the side, you should also start making the necro. Oh yeah, so that's that's we can do that. So I'm just going to blend one more. Okay, cycle the noise. So there was a comment earlier on just now. Uh, I can't remember his name. Was saying that um, they used to pick the green plant, which is the cleavers, and throw them at each other, which is exactly what I used to do. I think everyone used to do that. Okay. They're called sticky willy uh, cleavers and goose grass. And it's just genius. You just walk up and throw it up on someone's back and they don't know what's there. So I put some water to this mix because it wasn't blending very, very well. So it's a bit watery, but it looks really, really good. I mean, it, it looks good to me. Oh, and it's, it's going green. to be amazing. On the, on the, yeah, it does smell like, uh, like garlic. Oh, it smells beautiful nice. and so fresh, really fresh. So just put a bit of oil in the uh, in the pan for the gnocchi or gnocchi gnocchi gnocchi. I don't know how you do. Um, and we're we're doing a, a series at the moment. Hello to everyone. And you've got you've just been stung. No. Are you sure? Mm. Okay, okay. Because that's the problem with stinging nettles. They they do sting. Um, we're doing a show. Uh, when we do, we're doing this, uh, we're, we're following a plant-based food system, we're following plant-based recipes, and we are doing that because we believe that the, a plant-based food system is the, really the only just and sustainable food system that's uh, logical, really, for our future. Is that right, Dora? Okay, I'm just going to... It's heating up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we just put some olive oil in this pan uh, and we can fry the gnocchis. Yeah, yeah, but we will wait till it gets a little bit too, a little bit hot. Yeah, we tried them earlier and it was a disaster, so yeah, we're going to wait a bit more this time. So we're just going to put this on to the side because yeah. this, this one didn't work. And I'm going to start with the nettles. What I would suggest. Nettles. Yeah, yeah. I'm well, not very no, excited about nettles. It's going to be interesting. So a lot of people don't realize that we can eat nettles. You can use them uh, just as you do spinach. And uh, when you forage for them, please use gloves. And I'll probably use gloves right now because the, they're still a bit stingy. So I'll just go and get my gloves. And we're going to make um, spinach-like. It's blanched. Fish. Yeah, yeah. So, so just... um, you're going to use it basically like any green leaves. Just blanch them on. Uh, some water, I suppose. Yeah, just put a little bit of boiling water and blanch them just to just to slightly um, boil them and get rid of the the sting. So the question there was a question coming uh, on the little chat box asking what does net what do nettles taste like? Great <laughs> question. I don't know. I never tried before myself. So just for those of you who join on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or any platform, welcome to our home. This is Toby. Welcome, welcome. And Laura and we're Rebellion next week to Rebellion, and we are cooking for climate today. And we are cooking foraged food. And if I wouldn't cover, you would see that Toby is chopping up all kinds of stuff we foraged, including nettles. And I don't know how they taste like. It's going to be an experiment. So you will soon see how I taste nettles for the first time. And I will tell you how it tastes exactly. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they taste, they do taste green for sure. I mean, they do taste wild, which is really beautiful. And they can be used as we use spinach, as I've said before. So I'm gonna put a little bit of hot water in the pan. Is it this one? Um, this one yeah. is, is this one. Okay. I always forget which one it is. A bit of hot water in there, and we'll put the oven on for the asparagus. There's a great question from, from Jack. Is there a particular cooking oil that's better for the environment, or are they, are they all the same? That is a great question. Great question. And I'm 
I'm quite uneducated in the subject, but I will look it up. I, I, um, I guess the more local, the better. Well, that's yeah, that's from consideration for sure. But I guess there is also a process involved, which I'm not very sure about. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. But also, a lot of people just don't use oil at all, and I think that's a great choice as well for health reasons, for example. So um, a lot of people say that uh, oil is basically 100% fat, which is something that you don't find in nature because whatever you pick, whether it's a fruit or a vegetable, even not, it's, it's three components: carbohydrates, protein, and oil. And these three make that beautiful balance in all the foods that we eat that feeds you with that nourishment that we need. And once you separate something, like you make a protein powder, you make, make oil or make, I don't know, whatever if you separate carbohydrates, but if you break it up, it doesn't benefit you as much as the original shape would. I'm not a nutritionist, but I do trust that uh, naturally sourced yeah, yeah. food is the best for you. So I don't necessarily like using oil as much. I think for this recipe, we're trying to be also inclusive. So not go like, all the way to the extreme. And it's already quite extreme that we are using forage stuff, um, like nettles that are very unfamiliar in my kitchen at least. So we're trying to still use, for example, our electric devices yeah, and we're using blenders and we use a bit of oil. So that's just to make it easy for, for you guys uh, who are in the UK right now. If you're not in the UK and if you use different kind of uh, equipments and tools, I would love to hear what you use for, uh, for example, blending up stuff. I'm sure there are some great advices and would love to see cooking for climate videos from other countries as well, because yeah, yeah. different countries, different groups have different opportunities, accessibility to different kinds of uh, plants. True. So um, this is just what we found in the UK here in Buckinghamshire. And we're going to make an amazing white garlic cleaver. Cleaver. <laughs> Walnut uh, pesto with uh, gnocchi. With gnocchi that I made. And there was a great comment on uh, palm oil. I think that's a super, super great point. So we avoid 100%. Thanks so much for the comment. We uh, avoid palm oil 100%. So we never buy that. I don't believe there is such thing as sustainable palm yeah. oil at all. If you're interested, look it up. This is um, up for your research, but we personally choose to avoid um, palm oil at all, all sorts. I mean, you only have to see one photograph of uh, of a monkey in a <clears throat> in a forest that was uh, oh, a because of palm oil and you probably wouldn't do it again and it's not only that i mean like, you know the orangutans are one of the bring people's attention but there's so many animals that are displaced when mm -hmm. when um, it's all chopped down i think that's just a bit too much when when forests and so forth are disturbed and chopped down it's the whole system the whole uh vehicle system the whole uh all the all the plants, all the young plants, all the big plants, all the insects, all the birds, the mammals, the reptiles—they all get affected. Yeah. It's not only the the orangutans, but yeah. they seem to bring in the attention to them. And all that for something you don't need at all, because no one needs palm oil. It's uh, something that is added to food normally, but it's not something that you definitely need. So we are just boiling up the nettles right now. All those uh, stingy bits that you don't like—I <laughs> don't like either. So we boil them up in a pot like we do with spinach and I'm going to taste test this very soon. And it's only brown so it's only a little bit of boiling. Alright. So what I'm doing, sorry I'm making a bit of a noise. Yeah, this is good. So what Toby is doing, he is removing our roasted walnuts from the oven. There they are. There we go. Oh. So by the way, um, this is a second hand little container that we took from a restaurant but anyway this is uh roasted walnut and uh, we are going to use it to do what we're going to use it as a little um, mm. addition to uh, an, an alternative to parmesan mm. and the reason so, we're doing that is yeah so i used to eat a lot of cheese years and years ago it was um, cheese with everything or everything with cheese basically <laughs> and anyway there was something on my plate that was um from from cows and dairy for about Four years ago, I decided to go full plant-based, and now I try to avoid, well, not try to, I avoid everything 100% that is coming from animal sources, including also leather and um, fur and, and so forth, and animal products. And animal testing as well, which a lot of people forget. Mm -hmm. So obviously now Parmesan is out of our kitchen. However, we can always make creative alternates that give us that similar sensation or similar look, which is something that normally people miss, and um, it's very difficult to go, you know, plant-based overnight and change yeah. something completely. But it's easy if you can find something you're already familiar with. 
And he found that using nuts to sprinkle on salads or pasta or any food is a very nice way to transition because you still have that crunchy, nice bit on the top. And uh, just was quite tasty. And we just roasted these walnuts in the oven. <clears throat> yeah, and, and the roasting brings out the oils and then you know, there's a certain sweetness. It's really beautiful. Yeah, but... Is that nice? Mm -hmm. And you can just eat them because mm -hmm. we roasted them earlier on. Oh, they're so not hot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you only need that. Yeah, it's over. So we're going to cook asparagus. At the moment, asparagus is coming out. We don't have any in our garden. Um, we bought this, but it's a uh, UK based uh, asparagus, which is amazing. And we're gonna put it in the oven with a little drizzle of olive oil. Again, that's a, you know, you can choose what oil you want to put on or put no, on, no oil at all. And a bit of uh, salt and pepper for eight minutes until the little florets go a bit, a bit dark. And with um, asparagus, if you're not familiar, you just get the plant and you bend it like this. And this bit is, uh, you can actually use it for boiling up, but this is no good for the, um, for the oven. So we'll, I'll just break these off and then put it in the oven. What do you Shall want? We? Is that too hot? I think it's good. Well, you put it in there. Yeah, do it. So we're just uh, going to be frying, frying the gnocchi that um, the Dora made. It's a semolina, uh, what is it? Squash. Um, squash. And semolina and squash gnocchi. Look at this. Very beautiful. <clears throat> so we choose to cook uh, plant-based food for lots of reasons. Um, we're both plant-based, aren't we? Both uh, vegan. Yeah, plant-based vegan for the last four-ish years. Um, but I think and you can probably see that I'm wearing an Animal Rebellion t-shirt, which is Extinction Rebellion sister movement since last June. And uh, Animal Rebellion shares the same 10 principles and uh, has the same three expectations or demands, except we recognize that uh, it's impossible to achieve those three goals without a plant-based food system that is accessible for everybody. So, true. so um, there's a lot of good stuff going on. And uh, I think it's just worth to mention as well that uh, you probably see a bit of silence from extinction rebellion or animal rebellion, you might think, oh, it's over, you know, nothing is happening anymore. Uh, maybe these guys just gave up, but it's not the case at all. This time is really, really an interesting one for everybody, including these kind of movements as well. And this time really helps us to reflect and also to develop strategies to what the new world is going to look like, because yes. ultimately and fundamentally, whether we like it or not or want it or not, the world is changing and we're not going to return back to a world that we came from. It's just not, not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think in many, many ways, we don't want to return back to that world because uh, for many reasons, it was extremely exploitative. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to go into very political explanations, but I think we can see that this was a financial tax capitalism, which uh, made all our natural resources. I still don't like to say resources, it's so oh, I know, it's capitalistic like, as well, but like um, uh, our natural beauties, whether it's animals or uh, landscapes or yeah. uh, rain or whatever you consider as a part of nature into commodities and put the price tag on them. And they, they, they forget about the inherent value of life yeah. and the inherent value of, uh, of a plant or an ant or a snake or whatever it is. So anyway, um, the world is definitely changing and there is a campaign starting next week. It's called No, no Going, going Back. back. <laughs> which we 100% support. And also it's amazing to see how all different movements and different um, nonprofits are reacting in the situation right now. Everybody seems to share this same idea that uh, the last thing we want is to go back where we came from. Yeah, yeah. We want a more just and more equal and more sustainable world for sure, but not sustainable in terms of what's sustainable for business because we don't need business, we need people, we need health for everybody. Yeah. We need opportunities for everybody. Whether whatever gender they are, wherever they come from, what color they have, um, you know, these issues should now be sorted out, and there is an opportunity to sort them out in through this very very difficult situation. And yeah, we we really are lucky that we're in this situation. I mean, I mean, lucky in the fact that we can actually we realize that we can live. Uh, more slowly, basically. Yeah. This is really important. You know what? There is a, such an amazing article I read the other day. Um, it said, don't uh, romanticize uh, the lockdown 
I love the article. I'm going to try to find it and put it in the comment box. But basically, that says that uh, mm -hmm. it's also not a good recommendation to make this lockdown into a beautiful thing. And obviously, we are joking around here and we dance and we have fun. But let's be honest, probably 90% of the population is in very big trouble right now. Yeah. Um, whether it's health or economy, the collapse of the economy, the collapse of the world is not something that is easy to handle. So a lot of people really, really get the, the negative and the difficult side of it. So I think what we all need to just remember is that um, if if we have an easy time and you know we can hang around at home and cook these amazing dishes and be on this camera, that is super privileged. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that we have to beat ourselves up and, and hate ourselves for being privileged, but it means that having that awareness will drive our, our choices. So for example, because we realize this privilege, we are choosing to cook forage food tonight, <laughs> uh, except the gnocchi, which is not forage. <laughs> However, yeah. if you just join, mm -hmm. welcome to our home. This is Toby and Dora. Welcome, welcome. Extinction Rebellion and Rebellion. And we are making a foraged wild garlic flavors and walnut, walnut pesto, pesto with? with some gnocchi that I'm experimenting with for the first yeah, time. Yeah. It's all plant based. Um, it is all plant based. All vegan. And we are trying to find everything locally sourced. Yeah. As I said, homegrown if we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, which is all very important. When we say home, it means the UK right now. We are based in Buckinghamshire. Yeah, yeah. Just, just before, because I need to put these in the oven. This is the, uh, these are the asparagus heads. A little bit of oil on top, salt and pepper, in the oven for eight minutes. Which I'm going to do now. And they come out beautifully, really, really lovely. And not everyone has access to all this food, but most people have access to the food that we, we, we have foraged. And there's, there's so many different types of foods to forage. And I'm not a forager. I really don't know. I only know a few basics. But so many, there are so many foods out there that are really, really healthy for you. Medicinal as well. So um, a lot of this food, like garlic, is very good for the blood. Um, cleavers or sticky willy or, or goose grass is, is diuretic. You so it's, what it it's like. very good for, most people probably know this. I for cleaning out the kidney. So yeah, this is the, this is the cleaver. And a lot of people will know this. As children and who have children, you pick it up and you throw it at someone and it sticks on them. Uh -huh. Which is actually quite funny, but you can eat these. And when you forage, do be careful because you can you might be disturbing sort of nests on the ground as well. You've got to be very aware of that. And important. please don't talk, take too too much from one area. Just take what you need. And this is a really good lesson for everyone. Um, you know, we are in life really, you just take what you need and, and let's let, let uh, leave stuff for other people and other animals, which is really really important because without the animals, we are we are basically lost. Without the insects, the, the reptiles, the, the rodents, the birds, the sea life, we're we're pretty much lost. So we need to leave enough for them to. So there is a question from Francesca. Thank you. She's asking, what did you do with nettles? Did you put them in a pesto, or just garlic and cleavers? Uh, that's great a great question. great question, and thanks for following us, thank you. Um, so what we did with the nettles is we're blanching them. So this is basically blanched. It's slightly, but just to um, put them in a bit of boiling water for a little bit of time. Um, boiling them, uh, just so everyone knows, stops them from stinging. So it, it gets rid of all the stinging properties and so forth. When you do forage, please use gloves. Uh, mm -hmm. And even when you're foraging for cleavers and other things, you may find it's worth using gloves because you know, nettles are hidden in places, there are thorns, there are brambles, so it's well worth using gloves anyway. And always, always clean them when you when you get back because you never know what's on them, what's got on, what's landed on them. You know, it, it, they are out in nature and it's probably as clean as you can get, but it's always good to wash them. That's what we're doing. This is, I'm just going to um, empty this. So gonna, Dora's never had um, nettles before. Never. And these and nettles are so, so healthy. There's vitamin A, vitamin C, lots of vitamin D, you know. There's iron, magnesium, and I think potassium, is that right? Uh, I think so. So really, really good, really, really good for you. All this food is as good as, well, it's very, very, very good. So I'm just emptying this out. So if you're just joining, <laughs> welcome on Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, and anywhere you join from. We are YouTube. Cooking for Climate and YouTube, thank you. Cooking for climate, and we are making a uh, foraged pesto with gnocchi. And if you have any question or any comment or any advice or recommendation, 
please don't hesitate to type it into the comment section. We are going to try to answer as much as we can. We will. But this is an experiment for us as well. So we are uh, regular people. We are not cooks at all. And we have <laughs> no experience. I literally started cooking more seriously or regularly, like what, two weeks ago? No, three that's weeks not ago? true. She's been cooking amazingly ever since I met her. And that's not a lot though. So we are scaling up, but our scaling up process we're trying to make it as environmentally friendly and people friendly as possible, especially right now when we are in this, how do you crossroad is the best way I think of choosing where we go ahead. Are we going back to where we came from, which is a very exploitative way of living in the government, in a, that's a, that's a national level and an individual level as well, or we take a different path and look into alternates. So for example, what we're doing right now is a very simple, easy everyday, thing that anyone can try in the UK if you live somewhere around uh, a park or little forest or you have a garden. Yeah. If not, then you probably have your 20 minutes a day off when you can go for a walk and um, look into what you can pick from your streets and yeah, yeah. cook and make it into a meal. And maybe that's going to encourage others. And ultimately, in the end, we'll go less to the supermarkets, feed less into that corporate flow that is really not good for anyone maybe spend more time outside with the family looking for food outside and maybe we are going to be more healthy as well and we're not going to do it we're not going to have amazing meals on the expense of someone else so for all other reasons we are doing a foraged food today and i'm covering toby but that's okay we are making wild garlic cleavers wild garlic cleaver <laughs> and walnut walnut pesto, pesto. And, uh, and on that point as well, with regard to not harming anyone and so forth, if everyone goes out in forages, then we have to be careful not to take too, too much from nature. And we also have to leave some further forages. Um, but we're hoping that, I mean, as we've seen, and I think a lot of people have, have, have noticed this from friends, family, from online, the people at home, they're starting to realize that they, they can't rely on the system as much as they used to. Um, and they're starting to grow their own food. The, the, the seed companies and the, the nurseries have been overwhelmed with people you know, buying food, buying plants, buying plant nets, buying seeds, buying compost and pots and greenhouses and all these things, which is absolutely amazing to see and to hear. Because when you grow your own food, you know exactly what's gone into it. And especially if you go no, no GM seeds or heirloom seeds, so seeds that are created in the UK for UK climate, that kind of thing. So you're not getting this, uh, avocado stones, which will take five years to grow that much and it won't produce any any uh, any fruit because it's in the wrong system. Should I just move that up now? So we've got the gnocchi, the gnocchi. Which is ready. And I was going to put this uh, pesto, pesto. On shall I? Yeah, yeah, please. Ooh. Maybe not cook too much because we don't know what it's yeah. like. So this pesto is. Uh, come on, don't test me. Is it wild garlic? Yeah. Um, cleavers. Yes. <laughs> and walnut and a bit of olive oil and some try. water because yeah. I find it too difficult. Might be quite hot. Might try. Might be very hot. I am going to risk it. Going to risk it. So we're going to try it for the first time. Okay, Good I luck. To see what it looks like. <laughs> Good luck. Um, <laughs> Oh, mm, 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 mm. it's mm -hmm. really good, but we need some salt. Oh, it's salt. Really okay, that's good to know. Mm. You can try one. Yeah, I'll try one. So this is the first time for me too. The oh. garlic is just amazing. It comes mm. through so beautiful. Yeah, definitely need some salt. And maybe a bit of lemon, but lemon, again, is not growing in the UK, I don't think. Is Shall it? we have some nettles now? Now these don't look very amazing. So. <laughs> They do. They um, again. You can try it with a bit of lemon and a bit ah. of um, a bit of uh, salt. You know what? I can still see the stings, the stingy bit. But they're not. So the stingy oh. bit will be um, <coughs> cooked off. Do you want me to try it first? Okay, you bring one. And I bring one. Right. So good luck. Okay. So again, this is um, stingy nettle that you can find. Anywhere. Probably anywhere. <laughs> Even if you don't want to find it, you'll find it. And when you do forage, just forage, just cut the tops off. Use gloves, obviously, because they're most of these do sting. <coughs> and when you do cook, so I've just got a bit of walnut. <laughs> it's, a, damn. it's, it's a nettle. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a nettle yet. When you do cook them, it's, it kills the sting. 
So okay. this is what we're hoping. Ready? Ready? It's going to be hot. One, two, three. <coughs> I mean, it's like, it's actually better than spinach. It's really dense. It is very dense and it's very spinachy, isn't it? Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Mm. So a bit of salt, maybe, a bit of pepper, and a bit of lemon if you have. We're trying to do everything as local as possible. Yeah, let's not do not, not lemon. So we're not right going to do any lemon ourselves. Just salt. Maybe a bit of salt. Can you put some salt on the pesto? Oh, well? yeah, yeah. And shall we just sprinkle some? How are we going to blend? Okay. Mm. 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 Oh, my. Oh, my. Look at that. Look at that. That's really beautiful. So this is our final gnocchi and white garlic pesto and roasted walnut meal. So we're running out of time as well. And this is our asparagus, mm. which we'll put on the side. It's very, very green. Oh yes, that's a good idea. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So it could do with another minute or so. But you can eat asparagus raw and that, it really just tastes when it's fresh, it tastes amazing. And what we were going to do and what we can do right now. The garnish. So we yes. grew these in our garden. A bit like my hair right now. <laughs> Actually, it's a bit like everyone's hair probably. Right now. <laughs> so what are you doing? How's your hair? How's everyone's hair at home? YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, how, how's your hair? <laughs> Is everyone growing beards and having hair nightmares? I think I am. <coughs> <laughs> that walnut. All right, let me, let me do this. So this is water, watercress or garden? No, no it's, just, it's just cress. Garden cress that we grew in our, it's not a balcony, but it's sort of like a half garden. And, oh, wow, it was so fast. So we planted the seeds and in what, like a, about a few days, <coughs> all these little plants started to come up. Yeah. So it's really quite easy. So if you want to get started with something in your kitchen garden, that's probably something quite simple. To it's try out. And very, 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 very healthy. Extremely successful. So you will get a lot of this beautiful. And they taste peppery as well. Shall we just round it up? Yeah, I think we should round it up. I just want to finish off by saying we did say we have chives as well. <laughs> this is the only one I can find. Wait, I think can I put it in the middle? We'll put it in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our food. <laughs> da, 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 da. Amazing. All right. So that's been, this has been amazing fun and welcome to our home. Thank you very much for being there and yeah. being here and being thank you very much for being here and thank you for being here and being you. thanks for joining us today and if you fancy trying this out please let us know how it worked out you'll probably find us in the comment section because you're going to go back and yeah, yeah, yeah. respond to all the comments you guys left but um yeah do let us know if you tried it out and how you liked it yeah yeah again we're here cooking for climate facebook um hashtag uh, alone together which is amazing Mm -hmm. find lots of things to do with uh, in this situation and the yeah. new campaign next year next oh, week um no going back no going back very very and important most importantly don't forget to check out extinction rebellion and rebellion both of them two amazing movements mm. you can find any rebellion by this logo <laughs> and the animal rebellion there <laughs> and, and over there animal over there and um we're cooking plant-based food because a, a plant-based food system is the most sustainable it's the most just food system um that we believe exists absolutely um and on that note let's run it up yeah thank you very much thanks again peace love big love and take care of yourself and others thank you yeah yeah love, be love. safe stay safe